Now it is on. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. So uh, I'm uh, Stelios Vavridis from the Institute for Language and Speech Processing, Athena Research Center in Athens, Greece. And I'm really glad that uh, Peter has already introduced a couple of times uh, the term text and data mining. And what I will be mainly uh, discussing is uh, legal interoperability in text and data mining and the daily battles that uh, people that uh, develop and uh, aspire to run research infrastructures that deal with text and data mining uh, have to carry out. So, uh, yeah. Text and data mining, by its uh, first uh, component, the word, uh, the term text, uh, brings us back to language, hmm? because uh, text essentially is language. So one may wonder what the people that deal with language have been doing over the past uh, couple of years, and uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, unlike what uh, uh, people thought in the past, and uh, unlike what uh, uh, the early Chomskyan days back in the 1960s uh, would some, somehow preclude, uh, language science, uh, linguistics, uh, language studies, language technology, text mining, and all the rest of it has become a very data-intensive uh, science, a very data-intensive uh, uh, technology. This being realized, we started a couple of years, almost seven years ago. This is uh, the right time pro. This is the right number, seven years. seven years. So we started seven years ago with the pan-European network that uh, uh, is uh, uh, running uh, until now, and we hope that it will be running for uh, a couple of years more uh, under the rubric uh, MetaShare <coughs> that uh, uh, focused mostly on two things, on how you can uh, Make, how you can foster sharing of data in the language uh, uh, and language technology world and how you can make uh, data discoverable. In tandem with uh, MetaShare, there was another, and there still is, a, another research infrastructure called Clarin, uh, which runs all over Europe, and I've been personally involved in the development and uh, running of the Greek network of uh, the Clarin, uh, the European Clarin research infrastructure. Uh, not surprisingly, this is called Clarin EL, okay? And uh, there, we moved one step further. So we added the issue, the question of processability of data on top of the issues of sharing of data and uh, uh, discoverability of data. And uh, the last, if you want, development in this uh, 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 evolution is uh, one e-infrastructure project that is called uh, Open Minded that adds one very critical layer for running an infrastructure, and this is the layer of interoperability. So in Open Minded, we deal with both sharing, discoverability, processability, and interoperability. And I will be uh, saying a few more words about open-minded uh, uh, in a few minutes. Now, uh, here you see a very nice example of what it means uh, not to be interoperable. Uh, what you see in, uh, uh, in the red uh, uh, rectangle, uh, uh, the red shape there is uh, operationalization of e-infrastructure. This is our main goal. Now, uh, just to uh, give you an example of how things are not interoperable, if I were using this machine, then uh, these uh, 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 e-infrastructures would have been correctly hyphenated and not the way it is right now. This is one of the uh, simplest interoperability issues that we hope the technology will uh, resolve in, uh, in a few years. Uh, going back to open-minded, in open-minded we, we try to do the following. Uh, the researcher today tries to gather data from all different sources that uh, one may imagine. So these resources, let's, these data sets, let's call them uh, uh, content or corpora. Uh, 
one can uh, uh, query various uh, uh, repositories for corpora, but uh, it can also query open air as uh, one of the main, if not the main content hub for uh, uh, scientific uh, publications in their form as scientific data. It, he, he or she can retrieve the scientific publications and form a corpus that is the actual data set that will, he, he, will be, he or she will be using uh, for uh, text and data mining purposes later on. Now, what does it mean to use for text and data mining uh, services later on? It means that he, will, he or she will try to find some services that will do a very specific task on the particular uh, uh, data set. And then, of course, uh, the result of the application of these uh, text and data mining services on the created data set will be annotated corpora or will be new derived knowledge. Uh, this is the goal of uh, uh, open-minded, uh, and this is what we're trying to build, and we're almost uh, halfway or even more uh, uh, there towards the goal. Now, why are we concerned with, uh, with legal stuff? We're concerned with uh, legal questions simply because they pop up almost everywhere, whatever you do. Uh, when we try text and data mining activities on, uh, on, uh, on data sets, on resources, uh, you have issues that uh, have to do with the, ac the accessibility of uh, text corpora, uh, no matter how these can, uh, may have been built. You have uh, the issue of accessibility of uh, knowledge resources or reference resources that one may use to annotate these corpora. And last but not least, you have issues with uh, uh, language processing tools or text and data mining tools be they in downloadable form or in uh, the more uh, in the easier form of web services that uh, will operate on the data set to generate uh, uh, new knowledge all sorts of uh, uh, legal uh, uh, if you want questions pop up here whether you are uh, uh, within the copyright scope whether you're infringing copyright whether the sui generis database uh, protection <coughs> applies or not or if you're lucky enough and you are in one of the countries that are uh, about to leave the EU where uh, TDM <laughs> exception uh, really holds true. Uh, then supposing that you are within copyright, uh, you start dealing with legal contracts, uh, what we call licenses. And then you realize that uh, when you talk about licenses, you enter a real jungle, a legal jungle. And if personally, if I do not have uh, pro with me, I mean, I don't think that I can sign anything any longer. Uh, so you, you have been quite co a, a polite, you called it proliferation, normally we call it pollution. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, I want it to be politically correct, that's, that's correct. So licensing proliferation and the interoperability of licenses. And last but not least, how can one formalize, how can one tell a system, a machine, what a real license says and what the actual rights are so that the machine can understand. So let's see an example. In what we call the e-infrastructure era, normally uh, a researcher does the following. He uh, pulls content from uh, publishers, from a repository uh, of a publisher, or he may uh, use uh, repositories like uh, Core, or he may use content hubs, as I said before, uh, like open air. Uh, and then he aggregates, he or she aggregates uh, this, uh, all these uh, uh, publications uh, into a data set uh, that we can call for our purposes here research data. Uh, this is not the end of the story, this is just the beginning. What does he want to do with research data? Let's get an example. I don't know whether these are uh, really readable. Uh, are they readable to you? Okay, right. Uh, I cannot read them <laughs> uh, that far, but I think I remember what I wrote yesterday. Uh, so uh, suppose that uh, what you want to do is to extract entities. Uh, entities are very important in research data because they're the, the main actors in the research discourse. Huh? Entities or concepts. 
And then uh, uh, you may want to extract relations between entities. And to enable entity extraction and to enable the extraction of relations between entities, you, you need some sort of linguistic annotation. Now, all these uh, blocks may appear in a software repository, GitHub, Maven, whatever, uh, in, in an ordered fashion. What the researcher has to do is to put them in order to create what we call a workflow that will be applied on uh, the data set. So he aggregates the different pieces together and creates uh, a workflow, huh? a, a data processing workflow or a text and data mining uh, workflow. Excellent. In doing so, uh, for uh, many of the uh, uh, mining services, uh, we will be using uh, ontologies, uh, many ontologies in uh, the life sciences world, uh, some ontologies in uh, the social sciences uh, are uh, popping up uh, now, uh, but uh, in addition to ontologies, one may decide to use uh, lexica or models, models of the language or models, particular models of the uh, research discourse of the particular uh, research area. Right. Now, uh, let's see what happens uh, from the legal point of view when you try to get uh, the scientific publications from publishers or from core or even from open air. Uh, you get uh, a license, one or more. Uh, you, get for, you, you may get terms of use uh, for data or for services, uh, or you may get even not licenses, but just formal statements, or even not formal statements, just data tags, tags that tell you that, okay, this is public, or this can be used for non-commercial purposes, uh, etc. Not that all the tags are, uh, in most of the cases, standardized. Uh, you may have free text statements, just free text, okay? Very difficult for the machine to realize what the intended meaning of uh, the free statement is. Therefore, no clue whether uh, uh, the actual data set can be used. Uh, and in many cases, I dare say, uh, you may have even no license, pure agnosticism, pure indifference to whether the particular object can be used, okay? Uh, resulting to the researcher being held hostage of, uh, uh, due to the uncertainty hmm, that uh, there is no legal tag. Uh, it is even better sometimes to say, no, 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 this is closed, don't touch, uh, than just to leave uh, 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 the researcher in, uh, in an ocean of, uh, of agnosticism. Uh, or you may also have contractual agreements. Now, what does this mean? This means that the researcher has to read and accept the terms of use of various components of the workflow, okay, uh, creating most probably a jungle in his head, first of all, and uh, later on, most probably uh, uh, deterring him from uh, going on with, uh, with his uh, research task. Right, and I remind you that this may be uh, 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 avoided today, partially, only partially, in the UK. We do hope that uh, things will change. France is coming up. Uh, uh, maybe other countries are also, are also considering uh, adopting a copyright exception for text and data mining. Right. Now, in Open Minded, what we try to do is the following. We have this uh, virtual circle where from scientific publications and research data that you see on your uh, uh, left here, uh, we push these data sets into processing workflows and we generate annotated data sets, we generate new knowledge. This is the goal. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the legal complexity, what we try to do is to compute automatically summaries of licenses and terms of service so that we enable the researcher to uh, uh, accept the terms of uh, uh, service and licenses at one single step, if possible. But also uh, to guide him as to what the uh, allowable uh, licenses of the annotated corpora, of the derived knowledge might be based on the legal calculus that is more or less inherent in the legal uh, framework. Right. 
Uh, how do we do it? We, uh, we have adopted the layered approach. Uh, we have uh, a three-layer approach. First of all, we deal with interoperability between data sets. So we, are, we constrain ourselves in the world of uh, content. Uh, second, we uh, go on with interoperability between processing tools and services, and this constitutes the first layer. In the second layer, we try to see how interoperable the legal framework that governs the content, the data that is mined, is with the legal framework of the processing tools and processing services. And last but not least, and this is a Herculean task, this last one, we try somehow to standardize the different uh, uh, legal notions uh, by adopting some sort of rigidity in the uh, uh, semantics that are involved behind the legal terms. Uh, and we try to do this at the level of the licensing conditions. Last slide, implementation, how we implement the whole thing. We started with a compatibility matrix, so we compare licenses together. We, if you want, we disintegrate the legal documents into a set of primitives, legal primitives, and we try to see how these legal primitives are used in the different legal documents. Uh, then uh, we try to go on with uh, the Creative Commons good practice where we have human readable summaries, we have machine readable uh, 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 code, but we also have the full uh, uh, legal code of uh, the document. We try to harmonize the vocabulary uh, as much as possible, uh, just to tell you that, uh, I mean, even in, uh, in uh, organizations and in frameworks like Creative Commons and the Open Knowledge Foundation, the basic legal primitives are not defined in the, in the same way. This already creates interoperability gaps. And uh, we try to, gener to, to, to generate as machine readable uh, legal metadata as possible so that we enable machine actions in the future. To do that, we do not operate in vacuum. Uh, we use the ODRL, uh, a W3C uh, recommendation. Uh, and there, what essentially uh, uh, we do is we somehow decompose, again, uh, uh, legal documents in a formal manner uh, this way, uh, using uh, RDF as uh, the representation language. Uh, if this is all done, then we hope that one day we will be able to draw the conclusion that open access, which is uh, today a rather ill-defined term, really means free to mine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stelio. I think the, these two presentations are quite complementary in the sense of Peter having told us basically what is the necessary uh, work you need to do before you actually, that's how you sh what you should be doing so that someone else can actually share meaningfully, uh, you can share meaningfully your data with others. And I think what is interesting is that Stelio talked a lot about copyrights whereas Peter gave us a personal data dimension, yeah. uh, which is something we, we very frequently neglect, uh, but increasingly is coming uh, very strongly.